I've written three different versions of the Gen 3 Turbo Levo, and in this video I will let you know which bike I think will give you the most value for money. Or maybe you should wait for the Gen 4 Turbo Levo, which might be right around the corner. More of the Gen 4 later. The versions I've ridden the most are a couple of Turbo Levo comps. That's the carbon version with the Fox 36 rhythm in the front. It's got a grip damper and I think it works pretty well on this bike. I just wished it had 170mm of travel instead of the stock 160mm and maybe a slightly lower weight. The bike is agile but not super lightweight as any of the Orbea Wild top models. In my review of this bike I appreciated how all round the turbo lever was. It's a mallet and the geometry can be altered into six different positions thanks to a headset cup and a flip chip in the rear. The user interface was a clear step up from the competition and the ride is both smooth and quiet. Now this isn't a review of the Turbo Levo, this is more of a buyer's guide and a comparison of the different versions. And what happens if you go full out and kit the S-Works frame with the most expensive stuff on the market? These are the three versions that I've ridden, the Comp Alloy, the Comp and the custom built S-Works. There are quite a few other versions available, starting with the Alloy, then moving up through the list, and now 2024, it's a rather confusing list. You don't want to go below the comp versions, so remove the base carbon and Alloy version from your list. And here is why. I've tested lots of EMTBs, and in my experience, small suspension components just don't work very well with full fat EMTBs. It's a recipe for a lackluster riding experience and makes the bike feel like a brick to ride. There are exceptions, lightweight short travel EMTBs can do with lighter suspension components, like the specialized Turbo Levo SL for instance. That bike works really well with only a Fox 34 and no piggyback in the rear, depending on where you ride of course. But that bike is far from a brick. My rule of thumb, full fat EMTB, a piggyback suspension. There are a few bikes above the comp specs, and here I think it's a matter of personal preference and weight. I mentioned weight earlier, but what you see on paper is sometimes not what you feel when you ride a bike. I honestly didn't feel a lot of difference between the comp alloy and the comp carbon. They have the exact same specs otherwise, but the extra weight on the comp alloy is hardly noticeable. Which one of these you get doesn't matter really, in my opinion. About eight months ago I did a full review of the specialized Turbo Levo Comp Carbon and today I got the aluminium version of the exact same bike. I want to see if this bike is any different from the carbon version. So Specialized says that this bike is 95% the same bike as the Comp Carbon bike when it comes to components. But I noticed one thing straight away and that was that this bike has not got the Mastermind TCU. This bike has got the older version of the TCU uh, with no display on it. It's still that minimalistic controller up there which works very well. And the reason for why there are differences here is that this is a model that was released 2022. So the newer versions from 2023 will have that Mastermind TCU. But most bikes that are out in the shops right now, they have this older type of TCU. But apart from that, I can't see any differences at all from that comp carbon bike that I had in Norway. If you want a more significant difference in weight and performance, you need to go up a level or two. But then you need to pay a whole lot more, of course. So where do I put the comp level bikes? In terms of execution, like integration, power delivery and general build quality, I'll give it a 5 out of 5. In terms of handling and fun to ride, it's a 4 out of 5. There are other full fat ENTBs with more pronounced personalities. I haven't ridden the Turbo Levo Expert or other better spec versions. Maybe those versions would make me believe that the Turbo Levo is a bit more playful bike. For me, it's first and foremost an all-rounder bike. I wish I had the opportunity to ride the Expert or the Pro versions. Because of the more high-end Turbo Levos, I've only ridden a bike that probably very few have ever seen. This is a custom-built S-Works Turbo Levo that raced in the Swedish Enduro Cup, the 2023 season. 
I don't have the exact specifications here, but this is a 170 millimeter Seb Ultimate fork. All right, let's give it a go. It's a 170 millimeter fork. That makes a difference, of course. And as the guy tires, at least in the front, which I absolutely love, makes a huge difference. 10 millimeters may not sound like a lot, but I'm much more at home with this configuration than with the 160 millimeter Fox fork on the stock versions. You could, of course, upgrade your own Turbo Levo to a bigger fork, but I think you will void the warranty by doing so. I've also seen a few riders that run the bike with a coil shock, and that seems to work quite well, as the rear linkage is more progressive than linear. This bike has got a RockShox Super Deluxe in the rear, and I think that's a good match for this bike. These are hope brakes in some version, I don't know exactly what version, and the rotors are hollow for better heat dissipation. The wheels are made from carbon. I don't know what the make is, but apparently they come with a lifetime warranty, which can come in handy. The drivetrain is a SRAM T-Type, which was brand new when I tested this bike. A rare novelty then. Shifting under load is still weird to me, especially when shifting with the help from an 85 Nm motor. But of course, this bike is probably more than twice as expensive as the comp alloy, so there should be some sort of difference, of course. Still, I don't think there's a huge difference between the comp alloy and the comp carbon. It's a much bigger step from the comp carbon to this bike than it is from the comp alloy to the comp carbon. And this is uh, in turbo mode. Not full power though, but quite a lot of power and it shifts just beautifully. So that's a huge improvement in my book. Just wish they had kept at the railer hanger. This bike felt very different from the comp versions that I rode earlier the same year. The weight difference matters a lot, and so does the increased suspension travel and performance. The bike really is up there with my favorite bikes, the Orbea Wild M Team and the M Limited. At the cost, I should say, the S-Works bike is likely almost twice the price of the top Orbea bikes. Specialized and others have managed to build a hype around the Turbo Levo, but I think that there are other bikes that ride just as well. What's unique about the Turbo Levo is the quiet motor and its user interface, the ability to customize the geometry, and nowadays the price too, which has come down a lot since the introduction almost three years ago. I sometimes see this Com carbon bike for less than 5,000 euros here in Sweden. It used to cost twice as much, and this is why the Turbo Levo is now on top of my list of recommended EMTBs. It's suddenly value for money. Maybe there's a reason for the drop in the price that doesn't relate to the current bike crisis. There are a lot of Turbo Levos in stock at retailers, and perhaps that stock needs to be cleared for the Gen 4 Turbo Levo. There are a few reasons why I think that we will soon see a new generation. Firstly, Specialized usually have a three-year cycle between models. We saw that with the just recently released Turbo Levo SL, and also the regular Turbo Levo has historically followed this trend. We also saw a new Bros motor at Eurobike this summer, and the SRA motor too. Either motor is a good match for a new generation of EMTBs. What speaks against a Gen 4 Turbo Levo in 2024 is the ongoing bike crisis and the current recession we see in many countries. From a business point of view, it's not the best timing to launch a new model. Let me know if you have any rumors about the possible Gen 4 Levo in the comments below. I haven't seen any pictures yet, like I did with the Turbo Levo SL, so maybe it's not in the pipeline just now. Who knows? 